Hello there and welcome. I'm glad you can make it. My name is Michael Fudge and today I'd like to take a few minutes and show you how to install Microsoft SQL Server 2012. Actually, if you tried to install the product before, you know that the install itself is not the hard part. Deciding which of the many versions that you need is. Therefore, I'd like to dedicate a good portion of this video to an explanation of the various SQL Server 2012 versions that are out there. I'll help you decide which version that you need to install on your computer, depending on whether it's a production environment or a, a test environment or development environment, or maybe you just want to learn the product so that you can, you can get better at querying or business intelligence features. I'll explain where you can get the software, especially the free software or the trials. Then I'll walk you through an actual installation of a version of the product. I'm going to install the developer version, and then I'll show you how to verify that it was installed correctly. Selecting the right version of SQL Server is no easy task. There are many differences among the additions. Some of them are free, some of them are not. And depending on whether or not you intend to use the product in a production environment or just for development or testing on your local machine, you have to pick amongst these different versions. The feature set of each of these additions varies, and this therefore adds to your confusion. It can be quite a long task just to figure out which one of these you need. But don't worry, I've got you covered. I'd like to introduce my explanation behind all these different versions. In my eyes, there's eight different editions of SQL Server. I've listed them here. The first four versions only run on server class products, so you cannot install any of the first four on Windows 7 or Windows 8. You can only install these on actual Windows Server products like Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2012. The next four products are designed to be installed, they can be installed on a server, but they're designed to be installed on your desktop or workstation operating system. So you could put this on your Windows 7 machine or your Windows 8 machine. These additions, 5 through 8, are mainly used for test environments. So if you're, if you're trying to build out a SQL Server instance where you can experiment or build an application around it on your local machine, these are the versions that you need. Where people run into trouble is they, they try to, how do I translate the features that I'm going to have on the actual server product? Like maybe my company has SQL Server 2012 standard. So which version of the products that run on Windows 7 and 8 match that? And that's, that, that can be a challenge. Among the versions designed to run on Windows 7 or Windows 8, the Express versions are free. These versions are, in essence, the equivalent of SQL Server Standard, except they're limited by the number of user connections and the size of the database. If you need all of the features of the Enterprise Edition, such as analysis services or integration services, then you'll need to purchase the Developer Edition. The Developer Edition is not free. It retails for around $60 and is available online at various retail channels. Well, now that that's cleared up, I'd like to walk you through an installation. Whether or not you install 32 or 64-bit depends on what your operating system supports. If you have a 64-bit operating system, you want to install the 64-bit version of the SQL Server product. I'll explain where you can get it, and then we'll go through and do an install. Well, here we are on my Windows 7 desktop. I'm going to first check and see what version I'm running. As you can see here, I'm running the 32-bit version. So I will install the 32-bit version of SQL Server. So the, the next thing is, where can you get this? And if you open up a browser and simply search for it, here's the link on Microsoft's site. From that link, I was taken to this page here, which is the main portal page for Microsoft SQL Server. You can see that there's a SQL Server 2012, there's a SQL Server 2008 R2, I'm in the 2012 tab here, and um, this is a trial version here. I can get a 180-day trial. Um, if I go through, there's other editions down here. There's the Express edition. One thing you'll notice is that there's no developer edition. If you cannot download the developer edition from Microsoft, you have to buy it from some retail channel, like you can buy it from Amazon.com or Newegg or any, anyone, any place where you can get software. So after you've decided uh, which edition you'd like to install, one thing you should do is check one of the major prerequisites, 
which is that the .NET Framework 3.5 Service Pack 1 is installed. And I'll show you how you configure that out. If you go to Control Panel, and you're going to look for Windows Features here. So I'm going to go to Programs, and then it says Turn Windows Features On and Off. And you'll notice I ha already have that installed. .NET Framework 3.5.1, I've got that installed. You need to have that installed or else the installation of the SQL Server product will fail otherwise. So now I'm ready to go. I have the, the DVD has been mounted in my, in my DVD drive and I'm ready to do the, the setup, so I'm going to do that. Now as you'll notice as I go through this setup, because this is a development machine, I'm going to use this to kind of test out I'm going to build my actual databases on my production server. Uh, I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of time changing a lot of these settings. If I was doing a server class install, I, would, I certainly wouldn't put my databases on the same physical disk as the installation of the media itself. So like, for example, the product installs to the program files folder. I would put the databases themselves on a different volume entirely. There's lots of reasons for doing that. I won't get into them here. I'm not really here to walk you through a server class install. I'm just here to help you get this set up and running so that you can play around with it and, and learn the product. So I'm going to go to installation, do a new installation up at the top. I passed all the prerequisites. Use my product key here. Accept my license terms. It's going to go out and download this update here that it needs before it does the install. Okay, after a bit of grinding by my hard disk, I've reached this screen here. This screen is just a, the support rules. As you can see, I've got a warning on Windows Firewall. This is not a big issue, but you really kind of need to understand what this is saying. If you want to remotely access some of these services, if you want to get access to some of the services that are going to be installed from outside this computer, you're going to need to manually go in there and open up some holes in Windows Firewall. If you want to just run everything from the computer that you're on, that is, you're not going to have anything, you know, like, for example, if you're going to build a web application and the web application talks to the database, if you're building the web application right on this exact computer, then you don't need to worry about the firewall issue because you can access things locally. But if you need to get remote access, then you're going to have to open up some ports in the Windows firewall. So I'm going to do a SQL Server feature installation, and I'm going to choose all features with all defaults. Um, again, I normally would not do this on a server class install. I would pick and choose exactly and only what I needed for that particular server. But because this is my development environment and I need to be able to fool around with all the features like reporting services and analysis services and integration services, I'm just going to put it all on here. So as you'll see, it conveniently has checked everything for me, which is fine. And it has a default path it's going to install to, which is okay by me. All right, check it verified my installation rules. Now you're at the instance name. You can install the product multiple times under different instance IDs. An instance ID is like a copy of the product. So in a way, you pay for it once, but you can use it several different times. A lot of people do this if they have really large hardware. They'll set up um, a test environment under a different instance, and that test environment mimics the production environment. And it's a place where you can kind of sandbox and play around with things and not, and not break any live data. That's really kind of the purpose of an instance is to have a, a clean and separate install of the product, but yet not have to do it on a, a different physical server. As you can see, it also picks out where the data is going here. Like it says, program files, SQL server, MS SQL 11 dot MS SQL server. That's where my databases will go for analysis, re analysis, reporting, and SQL Server itself. Again, normally I would change where these go um, to be a different volume other than the, the volume where I'm installing the actual program, but this works for now because it's just a development machine. If you install SQL Express, the instance name is SQL Express. It's not MS SQL Server. All right, looks like I'm ready to go. So here's the service accounts I'm going to use. This tab lets me set the default collation, which is currently set to case insensitive ascending order Latin character set. You can change the character sets around. You can set all of these collations on any particular text field when you make a table. This is just the default collation so that if you don't specify um, anything with the varcar type, it just uses this. So it, again, it's case insensitive. Some people are really picky about this and they want case sensitivity, so they'll change this to uh, you know CS by hitting the customize button. I'm fine with the way it is. This dialog allows me to set up the authentication to the database engine. 
So I usually like to use mix mode, which means I have to set a password for the SA account, which is the administrator of the SQL Server. I usually like to do this because um, I always like to have one other way to get in there in case something gets messed up. I guess I'm old school in that regard. There's a lot of people that feel that there's no need to do this and it actually loosens or relaxes security by doing so. But I, I do this on all my servers and I usually set a pretty long password. The password I put in here is is not is not nearly the strength that I would use on a production environment. Up here it says data directories. This again lets you know where it's going to put the actual files that it creates when it makes databases. You can see there's a, a place to put a lot of different things like tempdb which is used by SQL Server internally. Where do you put the user databases and the user logs? In a production environment I have a volume for my databases, I have a volume for my logs. Um, tempdb usually goes where the databases go and then the backups go on, on, a, on a fourth volume. So I have one volume for operating systems, one volume for databases, uh, one volume for logs, and one volume for backup files. And that way you don't do something foolish like perform backups in the C drive and then fill up the C drive and then your operating system gets hosed. Or have your user databases on your C drive and your C drive gets full and then your application crashes because there's no, there's no way that the database can write anymore. So these are things you have to be very careful of in a production environment when you're just kind of building out a development uh, environment to play with. These are all fine settings, but I do bring them up again because I want you to understand what they what they mean. Okay, so now I'm configuring analysis services. One thing I need to do is I need to add a user to use analysis service services. So I'm going to click this add current user button. It's going to go out and grab the credentials that I logged into the machine with and make sure that that has rights to analysis server. I'm going to use multi-dimensional and data mining mode for analysis services, and I'm not going to change any of the data directories again. For reporting services, I'm going to install and configure it. Why not? And then I'm going to add the current user again, because I need to have somebody who has rights uh, to the product. Distributed replay client. For now, I'm just going to leave this blank. I, I can always configure it later. Do I want to send issues and errors to Microsoft? Eh, I'm just going to leave it off. And now finally, after all of those questions and answers and dialogues, I'm ready to do the install. It's going to finally go through and put files on my system and configure my system. This takes a while, so I'm not going to bore you with watching the progress go. I'm going to just pause the video, let it finish, and then I'll pick it up from there. See you on the flip side. And finally, after several minutes, everything seems to be installed. Let's see, let's make sure that everything's up and running. So one of the first things I like to do is I like to go to the services section of the control panel and verify that indeed the database engine is running. So I'm going to look here, SQL server. So analysis services is running, um, integration services is running, SQL server is running, the database engine itself is running. Looks like everything's running. Good. Let's uh, try to connect and verify the version of the product that we installed. You can see that I have some Windows updates. This is pretty common. I mean, I just installed a product, so there's obviously some more deltas from Microsoft that need to be installed, but I'll, I won't bore you with those details. So I'm going to go to SQL Server Management Studio right here. This is the client for Microsoft SQL Server. I'm going to connect to my local instance right here. And I'm going to open up a new query. And I'm going to type in the select add add version so that I can find out what version I have installed here. You can see I have SQL Server 2012 Developer Edition. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned a little bit more. And good luck with your own installation of SQL Server 2012.